Snowboarding games are all about doing death-defying stunts while defying death because you crashed into a tree going 100 miles an hour. They are mounds of fun, which is why when I found out you could do this, I knew I was in for a treat. Hello everybody, welcome to Gameception, the show where we find games within games and then go deeper. Today we are looking at how the snowboarding genre carved its way into Breath of the Wild. So do up your bindings and let's go shredding the gnar. I'm sorry for that. Snowboarding games are extremely simple. You direct a character down a snowy mountain, making sure not to crash while flying through the air doing flips. There is a lot of snow and a lot of crashing. There has been some good titles in the genre recently, but many people think that they hit their peak in the early 2000s. Get it? I, I said peak. The golden age of snowboarding games had its beginning with a little game called SSX, which came out just in time for people to play a video game about winter sports rather than going outside to endure the bitter cold and do actual winter sports. SSX was groundbreaking for the genre and became the standard that many future snowboarding games would try to match. That standard was all about insane speed and wicked tricks that you couldn't even dream about doing in real life. Jump forward a couple years to the release of SSX3, which many people believe to this day to be the definitive virtual snowboarding experience. SSX was the leader when it came to unrealistic and crazy snowboarding. No other game could match it, and as a result, the other snowboarding games that came after tended to be more realistic. Sean White Snowboarding is a game that people don't often think about when it comes to the genre, but I hold a special place for it in my heart. Other than SSX, this is one of the only games in the genre that I had played growing up. Other than the fact that there is still a lot of snow and you still slide down mountains, Sean White is quite different to SSX. It feels realistic, with some few exceptions. But compared to SSX, you'd think it's real life. Another thing that made Sean White stand out to me was the soundtrack. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy the soundtracks of the SSX series, I just like Sean White a bit more. Maybe because my dad really liked classic rock. Anyway, moving ahead almost 10 years to the release of Steep. This game is incredible. It is one of my favorites, if not my favorite, snowboarding game of all time. I would highly recommend it to anyone looking for a snowboarding game. Ubisoft gives it out for free on the PC occasionally, and you can find it for really cheap on the consoles as well. Unsponsored ads aside, I want to briefly talk about Steep and what it did right with the snowboarding genre. The biggest thing about this game that I love is the amount of exploration you can do. The game is so open. You can of course go downhill on a snowboard, but you can even go uphill using a jetpack-like device. The ranges that you have available for you to explore are so vast and varying. The game also lets the player do what they may, which helps immensely with the feeling of being an open world. Steep does so much for a game that is in the simple snowboarding genre, and I think it left a lot of potential for future games in the genre. The openness of the world is what made me originally think of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and what helped me put the two together. However, Breath of the Wild wasn't the first time that the snowboarding genre snuck its way into a Zelda game. Twilight Princess had a minigame that was required to progress the story that happened to be a snowboarding minigame. I loved that minigame. I thought it was so much fun, so I replayed it a number of times. And I didn't even know that you'd be able to replay it again later, so I just kept reloading my save over and over again to play it more. I took as many different pathways that I could, even though there weren't that many, but I wanted to see what it had to offer. When I was finished with the minigame, I continued through the mansion and never even realized it was the next dungeon until about halfway through when I received the dungeon's item. I think the reason that I didn't realize it was the next dungeon was because everything felt so believable. I didn't press some random button and watch some random castle appear out of nowhere. I explored a snowy region in the snowiest way possible and found a mansion that fit the atmosphere. It was all so seamless. And when it comes to seamlessness in Zelda games, I think that Breath of the Wild wins hands down. The world is so vast, yet so connected. As I played the game, when I would come across a snowy hill or mountain, I would always sled down it on my shield. It got to the point that I would search out snowy mountainous regions so I could do more shield boarding. 
One time I reached the peak of a mountain, I found one of the dragons. I then attempted to surf down the mountain while shooting arrows at it, which usually ended up with me flying off a cliff. I eventually discovered the actual shield surfing minigame, which gave the shield surfing mechanic a new breath and my mind started to run wild on what a Zelda snowboarding game could actually be. And with that in mind, it's now time to go deeper. Let's find out what could be using the ideas and game mechanics found within Breath of the Wild and the snowboarding genre. Let's start off pretty basic by building Hyrule up to become a snowboarding dreamland. Death Mountain has been completely turned into ice. The majority of the land has been taken over by a cold front. There are areas that have been able to escape the frosting, such as the Gerudo Desert. The main playable area of the world would center around Death Mountain. This Hyrule wouldn't be in the same layout as past Zelda games have had it, but it would take some cues from them. For example, you'd still be able to find memorable locations in familiar places, such as Kakarika Village, sitting at the foot of Death Mountain. Death Mountain would also act as a center hub for the world. There would be warp points around the world, but you would also be able to access each place in the game by maneuvering around Death Mountain. There would be three or so main areas to explore being places like a frozen lake Hylia, the Gerudo Desert, or Hyrule Castle for starters. There isn't a whole lot to say about the stories found in snowboarding games, or Zelda games for that matter, but the basis of the story would lie within Ganondorf doing something that caused the whole world to become frozen in ice. Link and Zelda would set out to reverse the calamity that has befallen Hyrule. They would travel to various places, collecting things, to be able to eventually access Ganon's domain found within Death Mountain. Along the way, the two would be able to gather equipment such as a bow, a hookshot, or a deco leaf for example. The duo would be working side by side for the majority of the game, which would allow the player to choose who they would like to play as, and it would also be an easy way to play with a friend. The game would conclude with an epic battle taking place on the back of Death Mountain. Starting from the top, they would make their way down the mountain while fighting on snowboards. Eventually, they would meet the bottom and have their final showdown for the fate of the world. The biggest thing that I envision that would make this work would be a good balance of snowboarding and combat mechanics. One would never get in the way of the other, but they would still have to coincide. For example, while shooting arrows, the player would have to worry about not running into anything. Doing a spin attack could be devastating if done in the wrong location. Or snowboarding would have to take precedence in an area that is particularly hard to traverse. These mechanics would go hand in hand with the mountain range. Death Mountain would be set up in a way that would allow the most exploration possible. From top to bottom would be a gnarly snowboarding run. There would be many branching pathways to take and many ways to access these separate pathways. These pathways would be accessible as the game progresses. Obtaining items would be the main key to unlocking these runs. Doing something like shooting a hookshot into a tree that would let you swing around it like Spider-Man kinda to a new area. Upon taking the multitude of routes, the players would find many different things such as items, snowboards, customizable clothing, shrines, you name it. You could find a bit of anything really. Shrines, however, would not play a huge role in fleshing out the game. They would instead break up the repetitive gameplay that snowboarding can sometimes be. They would also allow for more warp points, letting the player choose where on Death Mountain they would like to start or run. The other areas in the game do not have to have a large mountain to slide down. They would supply other means of snowboarding. For example, in the Gruta Desert, a player would be able to make use of a sand seal to explore the location. Lake Hylia would make use of a deco leaf as a sort of sail to move across the frozen water. The enemies and bosses would fit each area accordingly. On Death Mountain, you may run across a group of Bokoblins that are snowboarding alongside you. In the Gerudo Desert, the player may fight a stationary boss, and then they'll have to travel around it using a sand seal. Not only will the player find enemies in the wilds of each area they explore, but they may also come across memorable characters from the Zelda franchise. Of course, Yido and Yita, the yetis that started this all, would be in the game somewhere waiting to race, but it would be a crime not to include characters like Tingle and Beetle. With the inclusion of characters found from across the Zelda universe, the background music would consist of a similar soundtrack to that of Hyrule Warriors. It would be very fitting to snowboard in a Zelda game with the backing of some classic rock remixes of Zelda tunes. Hyrule Warriors is one of the games that gives me hope that something like this could become a reality. I still do not foresee Nintendo ever doing anything like this, but with all that said, it's fun to imagine about a gameception that could have been. Thank you for watching, everybody. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like I said in the preview, feel free to let me know about any gameceptions you have in mind that you would like to see in the future. If they may work out, I'll let you know. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into contact with you and see what we can do with them. Anyway, thank you again for watching and have a good one.